The turn of the 1970s witnessed a musical groundswell in Western Europe, particularly in Benelux, and one such example was the Belgian psychedelic band Waterloo, and from their singular 1970 release, First Battle, the track Life. <laughs> Okay, already we have this just a uh, flurry of, of cymbals, hi-hat, and that flute uh, bringing in a, a very distinct uh, melodic line right away, and that bass uh, kind of doing a circular line. <laughs> And then quite some drum rolls there, too, just... Okay, we got... The, I, I, I love how we got these this this descending uh, progression, and then uh, with, with, like, breaks at the end of, uh, of every figure... At the, at the figure of eight, and then, uh, like, that really thick kind of soupy psych organ sound, uh, just filling out the space. Life is going here and there, it doesn't matter. We're still living on this world, you still got it. Oh, that fuzzy, like, organ riff that just kind of came and, and just ascended right out of that, that, uh, as the lyrics wrapped on that, for, and yeah, the the um, singing very uh, much in that '60s mode of everyone singing in the same key, the same octave. Um, yeah, harmonies, of course, were just starting to get a little bit more advanced around this time. But this this being more vocally kind of tied to the beat era, I would say. Okay, uh, that that's quite a, a a fuzz sound that comes in there. I guess on guitar, although it almost sounds like it could be organ, but we we've got the real like icy organ sound that's coming out of my right speaker, and um, I would say ultimately the the two most dominant sounds really are, are from the rhythm section. The bass really thick full, circular at all times, playing really distinct notes that stand out. The drumming just constantly pile-driving, whether it be rolls or cymbals, and, and the organ just filling things out with that kind of, like, frosty, thick sound. And, and, then, and then the guitar just kind of coming in at odd intervals with that fuzz tinge. Oh, that's a quite, quite a, I like that key, whatever they, they land in right there. there. There was kind of like a doll note in it. Uh, that's basically going, uh, B, A, G, sharp. I, I, one of the tracks I did just yesterday had that same kind of progression, those same four notes. Uh, the, no sound the drummer's doing like uh, threes within the bars of four. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Like. Oh, I love those just like kind of like fanfare midsections where it, dazzling like organ notes and such. Like uh, used in quite a few songs from this year. I mean, I mean, it instantly has me thinking of a passage from the Quatermass album. Oh, the, the middle eight in its own way is like almost more interesting than the song proper. I love that call and response between different, each instrument, one instrument plays a lick and then goes silent while the other instrument, you know, mirrors the lick. You know, 
for like a, a two uh, minute, 48 second pop song, this really has like a lot of detail, like in each, each section. <laughs> Yeah, notice how uh, da, na, 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 the call and response between that, like the flute, and then and then the guitar comes da, na, 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 like that. Now that's interesting. Finally, they they mix the vocals up a bit. It, it kind of like panned from this speaker to that speaker. Those kind of uh, sleepy uh, tint to the vocals on uh, on the bridge, kind of um, we're calling like a uh, like strange brew, yeah. I love when when they the those parts where it's just also like musical, like intricate, like playing those those notes and like ascending scales and such. <laughs> ah, that was uh, Waterloo with Life from their 1970 album uh, First Battle. Yeah, uh, reissued a couple of times around the uh, turn of the millennium with bonus tracks, including this one, which was not ever released. Um, until it appeared on the 1999 Musea reissue of the album. And I can't believe a track this great, uh, what I'm about to play, could have been shelved for 30 years. The track in question is The Youngest Day. <laughs> Okay, kind of a flute salad to begin with. And some really relatively clean for its time organ right there, kind of interlocking and doubling up on the melody. <laughs> Okay, now we got some really thick sounds and some like stop start choppiness, which was uh, quite being explored quite uh, on both sides of the channel uh, at around this time. <laughs> the bossa nova chords right there on the acoustic guitar dun, 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 with that major seventh staring in the deep dark blue of your misty sky staring at that deep dark blue autumn misty sky i think he said knowing that the end is near for growing Knowing that the end is near for something and crow and, and I. So soon, so I'm soon, so soon. So soon. So Oh, these unaccompanied, like, icy organ moments, those thin, but... That boing, boing, kind of like a Jaws harp or something that... You know that something, it, it, it has sort of a sense of foreboding, like something's about to happen. <laughs> Yeah, kind of a pensive, you know, half step. B na, a, um, B uh, B flat A like that. Well, some really fractious uh, saxophone uh, interjections there, uh, bringing about a different element to the band. Yeah. Uh, I guess this must have been recorded um, right after. It looks like they almost recorded a second album. 
circa like 1971, 72, with with a few additional members in the lineup. Oh, um, Frank, I guess we have a different guy on organ here. Yeah, Frank uh, Woitz plays on this album. Yeah, he was uh, he later collaborated with um, with um, ex Henry Cow woodwindist Jeff Lee, who played on Legend, and he also. Uh, cut um an album oh he was on the the second Axac mobile album yeah yeah kind of a, a an, an a belgian avant-garde journey guy <laughs> And he was also in the band Pazop, who recorded a great album uh, in 1972 that wasn't released until I think uh, uh, that was that that was shelved for 25. Yeah, uh, Cyclus of a Lunatic Genius. Yeah, great album. Very very much in the very similar to uh, Moving Gelatin Plates. <laughs> kind of getting sort of a Moggle Thrash type vibe. Okay, that saxophone we just heard was by John Van uh, Rymanen, yeah, who uh, joined around this time, was, wasn't on um, First Battle. And, well, not a lot of, uh, huh, not a lot of credits, uh, according to Discogs, only 10. Dated between, uh, huh. Oh, it's it's so funny with these discogs. It's 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 like dated between nine, ten credits between nineteen sixty six and twenty twelve. Huh. Yeah, kind of like a coliseum. Or like, 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 like the English uh, brass rock. I'm thinking, or heck, uh, kind of even like Mr. Albert Show. What kind of effect is on those vocals? I know something's being employed. <laughs> I love that thick saxophone being layered over that that really kind of like rough organ and and thick like bass and I love that that sax line. No, no. This is such a touch of class. Whenever the guitarist interjects, I just love the tone that he gives us. It has such like a stinging type type quality to it. He's got uh, Gus Ro Roan has a whole heaping list of credits uh, extending well beyond like two decades from the time of the album's release. Uh, yeah, and uh, I although nothing quite uh, well. Let's just I'll read through it later. Nothing quite uh. No, nothing exactly familiar to me at uh, on a media glance. Now I really like how that saxophone is leaping out uh, uh, amid the, the the sonic mix of the solves. That's a really good separation where where the rest of the band is slightly muffled and bassy in this section and the saxophone is really like crystal clear and 
crackling and kind of trebly. Makes it stand out more. <laughs> like how he switches between those kind of staccato those more sharper notes and then uh those those ones that are a bit more kind of like kind of, kind of like mang kind of like garbled <laughs> on this track, they, uh, that big throbbing persistent bass line is given to us by uh, Jean-Paul Mousset, who also played on the 1976 Abraxas album uh, with Charles Luce. Uh, yeah, that great, great album, great jazz rock album from that year. Um, and funny enough, a different Jean-Paul played on the prior track, Jean-Paul Janssen's, yeah, who's and despite his great work on that song, uh, this was apparently his only credit. Yeah. Um, well, the the first, not not this song, but the uh, the the prior track from uh, First Battle. Yeah. <laughs> Sure of kind of like Leslie in effect and Hammond sound. <laughs> persistent backdrop. <laughs> Without varying it up, like like making it choke, making you know, really just mangling it. <laughs> to Quatermass and of course Deep Purple from around this time are hard to resist. I'm also, uh, uh, the band um, Orange Peel immediately flashed through my mind as well. <laughs> The drumming comes in starts giving us like four wallops per bar to like um indicate that uh okay we're we're tightening up now we're coming out of our our solos guys you've okay okay guys you know we're we're pulling together now <laughs> punk vibe from, from that that rhythmic element right there <laughs> Just kind of the brash staccato quality of it all. That's that's kind of uncharacteristic of a lot of music of this time period. Powerful a sax riff. <laughs> Oh, hear that guitar, hear that fuzzy, like, lead, sustain notes just interacting with that sax. Yeah, actually, 
I mean, don't, don't. I, I'm almost kind of like uh, the police just kind of flashed through my head. Okay, I should uh, point out that the, the drummer uh, Jack uh, Maurer was also in Abraxas. So we've got like a rhythm section here in common with the 1976 Abraxas album. And he also played on the second Koss album, Viva Boma. Um, and uh, a pretty healthy looking list of credits. Oh, it was also in... Um, Oh, I, I was about to say, it was also in Speed Limit, but no, not that Speed Limit. No, not the French act. Fractious finale, yeah. And the vocals that have just left the building courtesy of Dick uh, Bogart, who, oh wow, uh, I, I like his resume the best of, of them all. Um, after Waterloo, he was in uh, Pazop, Abraxas, and Koss. Yeah, so he, he's, a, a common, he's a common thread through all these great Belgian, like uh, psych and jazz rock bands. <laughs> Wow, some really uh, scary, haunting, kind of demented chords toward the end and just, yeah, just kind of uh, landing in a depth not yet, not really seen throughout the rest of the track, yeah. That's uh, Waterloo, uh, The Youngest Day, a uh, track from the reissue of their 1970 classic First Battle. And from the actual album, uh, the track Life before that, yeah, exp two different sides of the band. One kind of in sort of real psych rock mode, like 1968-69 there, kind of uh, crossing the channel maybe. with a, And then, and then uh, one track records circa like 1971, kind of very much in line with... Uh, uh, like the the brass rock psych sounds like a uh, caterpillar could have been another uh, reference point here yeah um, and anyway for more rubies and sapphires from the Waterloo album the uh, pl album plus uh, see the directory of albums by Belgian artists linked in the description below for red out tracks and purples from a whole load of uh, great Belgian albums from the 1970s and 80s, along with uh, from their uh, northern Benelux neighbor, uh, the Netherlands, yeah. Like and subscribe, follow me on social media, uh, share the video, and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about the two tracks we just heard, the layers, the interplay, the sounds, the thickness, the sonic effects, yeah, the, the, the feel, the intensity of like the organ, the guitar, the saxophone, the rhythmic component, um, and the, the lyrics, if you have any observations about them, if you know them better than I was able to catch them in passing, I couldn't find them printed anywhere, yeah. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most air-traveled Trimax most, signing off.